Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just have a few items at the top here to pass on, and then I'd be happy to take your questions. So getting started right at the top, as you probably have seen, the Department of State's mission in Sudan is evolving, which means that the Department of Defense and U.S. Africa's command support to the mission will also change. We will make decisions about how and when to move U.S. forces when the conditions are right to do so. And while I don't have any specific announcements to make right now, we are still prepared to support if asked. Being responsive and having the ability to surge capacity and capability when it is needed is a key tenant of military readiness. In the AFRICOM area of responsibility, the U.S. military routinely coordinates with the Department of State and our ambassadors in Africa, and we will continue to be engaged as the situation evolves. Yesterday, the Secretary hosted President Marcos of the Philippines. They discussed the remarkable strides the U.S. and the Philippines have made to expand and modernize bilateral defense cooperation, including an increased tempo of combined maritime activities. Secretary Austin commended President Marcos for successfully hosting the largest ever iteration of the annual U.S.-Philippines exercise Balakatan last month, which included more than 17,000 participating troops and, lev and leverage, excuse me, three enhanced defense cooperation agreement or EDCA sites. In addition, Secretary Austin and President Marcos discussed plans to oper operationalize the four new EDCA sites, and these sites will enable combined training exercises and other cooperative activities, including to support the U.S. and Philippines Armed Forces Maritime Security, Maritime Domain Awareness, and Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Relief Capabilities. Also yesterday, the Department announced the 37th Presidential Drawdown in security assistance to meet Ukraine's critical security and defense needs. The package included, sorry, the package included additional ammunition for U.S. provided HIMARS, additional howitzers, artillery and mortar rounds, and anti-armor capabilities. And last, switching gears, U.S. Sixth Fleet and Naval Striking and Support Forces NATO will kick off the biennial exercise for Formidable Shield 2023 next week. The exercise will take place from May 8th to 26th, and it involves 13 NATO allied and partner nations, more than 20 ships, and 35 aircraft. This long planned exercise encompasses live fire rehearsal events in a multi domain environment against subsonic, supersonic, and ballistic targets. This three-week exercise demonstrates the unprecedented cohesion of the NATO alliance, our unmatched capacity and capability, and our combined commitment to deterrence and defense of the Euro-Atlantic area and the High North. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. Start off with Lita. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a quick Sudan question and then uh, border. At this point, are there any additional ship transits planned by the U.S. out of Sudan currently? So um, so right now, uh, the Brunswick continues to operate near the port of Sudan and is currently transporting um, approximately 200 people over to Jeddah. Um, our force posture remains the same and hasn't changed. So the ships that were on their way that we had announced at the, um, I believe, last week are continuing to make their way. Right, but is, do you expect this is the last transit or would they be, or do you have plans for more? As of right now, I have nothing more to announce. Our force posture just hasn't changed on that front. Um, now, uh, um, and on the border, do you have any additional details at this point on the border deployment? Uh, how many Marines, how many Army, what states do you expect them to be deployed to, and where do you expect they will be coming from? Thank sure. Um, great question, Lita, and um, I'm, I'm sorry, this will be a uh, wholly unsatisfying a answer for you. I would refer you to the services for that, for their numbers of where they're pulling their units from um, to go to the southwest border. We are anticipating um, an initial arrival around May 10th, um, but I would refer you to the services for more information on that. Okay, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yep, I will. I will. I'm happy to happy to happy to do that. I believe they're also in the process of notifying those units, and that is, you know, of course they're they're doing that on their own timeline. But I'd be happy to circle up with them as well. Great. Yeah, Natasha. Can I hand you this, Roger? Sorry, one second. Thanks. Just one on the uh, drone attacks on the sure. Kremlin. Has the secretary spoken to his Ukrainian counterpart about that specific? incidents and or have Ukrainian military officials been in touch with Pentagon officials about it and 
one follow up. Yeah, sure. I don't have any conversations to read out that the secretary has made. Um, I'm not aware of any calls that he's made to Minister Reznikov today. And then can you give us an update on the balloon that was spotted over sure. Hawaii? Where is that right now? Have there been any other balloons that have been spotted in recent days or weeks? Um, so no, in terms of any other balloons or um, unidentified objects, I, I don't have anything to announce today of anything that's been spotted. Um, in terms of the location of the balloon, um, all I can say is it's not near U.S. territory or U.S. airspace, and I just have to leave it at that. Sorry. Yeah, any other questions? Mike, yeah, right over here. Oh, one sec. Hello, uh, can you, this... Uh, this drag queen recruiting initiative, is that strictly a Navy project? Or are you going to have the other services also get involved? Is there going to be an Army drag queen, Air Force drag queen, that sort of thing? Is it strictly a Navy project? Well, what? I would say first, and, and at the, the top, just looking at this holistically, we are incredibly proud of those who decide to serve, and that's every young American who decides to serve, to serve and to take the oath um, to put their line on the line in defense of our country. Um, again, the the program I believe that you're referring to was the Navy Digital Ambassador Program, which was a pilot outreach effort. It was not a recruiting effort. Uh, for more information on that, I would direct you to the Navy. Um, but this pilot program has concluded, and the Navy is evaluating the program and how it ex exists in the future. Rio. Yeah, thank you very much. One question on Japan and South Korea. That last week, the U.S. decided to take additional steps to make extended deterrence to South Korea more credible. So do you assess the U.S. has to do take some similar steps for Japan as well, who is also threatened by North Korea's nuclear and missile arsenal? Sure. Well, I don't want to get ahead and get into any hypotheticals, but what I will say is that um, the the alliance between the United States and Japan is stronger than ever. Um, we obviously share common uh, areas of focus and of values. And so um, when it comes to promoting peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific region, that's something that um, the U.S. shares with Japan. Um, and we will continue to keep those conversations open um, and, and always welcome those regarding our, our, our national security. But I just don't have anything to announce. Yeah. Tom. Wait one sec. Hi, Sabrina. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, is, is, this, is Secretary Austin satisfied with the uh, Army's decision to stand down the Quezon unit at Arlington National Cemetery uh, as a way to further review the treatment of the horses there? Thanks. So um, I, I know what you're referring to. I just don't have more information on that. I'd be happy to take that question and get back to you and provide you an answer at the time. Yeah, no problem. Wow, is everyone just really quiet before the weekend? Yes. Thank you. I had a quick question on uh, Ukraine and Bakhmut. Um, in February, uh, Gazprom, the Russian oil company, was said to have created a private military to assist in Russia's war efforts in Ukraine. And, um, well, number one, I was wondering if there's any update on that information. And then also, this week on May 1st, the, uh, the Ukrainian land force commander uh, said that assault groups of Wagner and fighters of other private companies are part like are, are attacking uh, in Bakhmut. And I was wondering if the reference to the private companies was a reference to uh, the Gazprom uh, private military. I'm not aware of a Gazprom private military. I'm not aware of the reports that you're referring to, so I'd have to take a look at that. I'm just not aware of anything. Um, in terms of Bakhmut, I mean, we've seen the Wagner forces continuing to entrench themselves um, within within the east there. Um, Bakhmut remains a contested region, um, but we've certainly seen a an, an increase in Wagner presence. But in terms of m private companies, I'm, I'm just not aware um, of any other additional support that Wagner has other than Wagner itself being a private, uh, you know, company that works with the Russian military. Travis, you got anything? No? This is going to be a really short briefing if we want it to be today. <laughs> um, sorry? It's the, did I say Friday? No, I mean, anything else, I'm happy to, I'm happy to take any others. Otherwise, we can make it a really, a really fast briefing today. Yeah, Laura, go for it. 
have any sense of the timing for when an announcement is going to come on uh, the location of Space Command headquarters? I don't have an I don't have a timeline on that. I would refer you to Space Command for any additional announcements that they are going to be making. Um, but I just don't have a timeline on that. Oh, we got Tom. I'll, I'm going to go to Liz and then I'll come back to you, Tom. <laughs> I promise I'll come back. Yeah. Thanks, Sabrina. Yeah. Um, on the border, when were the services formally notified uh, that they would be sending troops to the border? In terms of when the actual units or the, like when the department? Just when um, the Department of Defense notified the Army and the Marines that they would be sending troops to the units. So on April 29th is when uh, the Department of Homeland Security requested it, the additional support, and that would be 1,500 military personnel um, to supplement efforts at the border. And on May 2nd is when the secretary approved that request. Um, again, as you know, this is a 90-day temporary um, deployment of our military personnel at the border. They will not be conducting any law enforcement activities. Um, their, their role and responsibility will really remain back of house, um, including data entry and um, helping with any ISR capability and monitoring. But again, no, this, their, their mission is not in a law enforcement capacity. Sorry, Liz has one more follow-up and then I'll come back. One sec, one sec. So they were notified, so they were notified um, when Secretary Austin signed it? I would say when the secretary approved the temporary increase is when services started to be notified. But, um, I, you know, in terms of individual units, I would defer to each service of when that when that happened. OK, thank you. Yeah. I'll go to Tom and then come back to Mike. Uh, thanks again, Sabrina. I I'm asking this question knowing that it's going to violate. It's calling on you to speculate, calling on you to offer uh, perhaps intelligence matters and to offer a timetable. I'm asking this on behalf of Mr. Glenn, who clearly is calendar challenged since he thinks this is Friday. Uh, this is, however, the month of May. And we were told at one point that we would be going back to the PBR in May, which I think is this month. So if you could possibly speculate uh, when we may be back, we'd be grateful. Thank you. I believe there's a sign outside the PBR that says when uh, we're tentatively scheduled to return. Uh, I will just say that our team has done an amazing job uh, creating this space for everyone um, while we are going through a transition of modernizing and upgrading our, our uh, press briefing room. I'm expecting the end of May. I don't remember the exact date off the top of my head, and I'm not taking that question. <laughs> Mike, go ahead. You said the military is not going to have a law enforcement role, but are they going to have any other kind of role where they're actually – engaging with the migrants coming over in a support type or helping them out type or anything or is it or because i understand there's a there's a difference between law enforcement type and so is going to be any interaction between them and the migrants uh, at all so there's there's not an anticipated interaction between our personnel that are going down and the migrants there um their responsibilities are, are strictly back of house or mainly back of house uh, or back of warehouse I should say um, they'll be doing data entry and monitoring and helping with surveillance capabilities but the intention is not for them to be interacting with migrants for for that that would be more of a DHS role um, and I would refer you to uh, you know Customs Border Patrol and also DHS just for more specifics on on what they do when interacting with migrants yeah Travis um. I just wanted to check to make sure that there aren't any outstanding requests from other agencies for military assistance at the border um, and whether there's an anticipation that there will be a need for more U.S. troops to go down there. Um, at the moment, I'm not aware of any other um, requests for DOD support at the border. I mean, it it mainly come through DHS, and of course, they made that request. Um, this is a this is a temporary um, positioning of our service members down there. Of course, if DHS requests more or re uh, requests an extension, we um, would certainly review that option and haven't ruled anything off the table. But for right now, that deployment is just for those 90 days. Yeah. Yes, in the back. There has been claimed that they're going to launch satellite uh, as they schedule. So do you have any indica indication that North Korea prepared a launch satellite? I, I don't have any I don't have anything more to share on that on that front. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, Rio. 
Yeah, thank you very much again. Uh, I want to ask a question about the trilateral cooperation with Japan, South Korea, and the U.S. The, the three countries have been working uh, to share real-time intelligence of North Korea's uh, missile data uh, this, uh, to respond swiftly to North Korea's uh, missile launches. So do you have any timeline to complete the, the, the process to, to share real-time intelligence among the three countries. How much do you think the recent President Yoon's visit to, mm -hmm. to the U.S. would be helpful to expedite the, the process? Well, we are certainly in touch with our allies and partners in the region. I wouldn't get ahead or share any of what our conversations in terms of intelligence that we share. Um, we continue to monitor the destabilizing activities and uh, continued test launches that the DPRK um, engages in. But I just don't have anything more to, to more to read out about our conversations with allies and partners. OK, we can make this a short briefing. Um, just want to say thanks and happy Thursday to everyone. Great. Thanks, Roger.